What's up guys? Graham here. Today we're going to do a little bit of a story time. I didn't really have too much uh, time to put together like a build video or something for the weekend. So I wanted to go ahead and start a story time segment that I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, there's two different things that I'm wanting to do. I'm wanting to do a story time segment and I'm also wanting to do a answering questions kind of video as in what you guys ask me on Twitter or my Facebook page. I'm going to take those questions and make it into a video and basically answer anything you guys have to uh, have questions about so to say. All right, so the story time today is going to be about the history of the Grim Gaming channel and exactly what all we've been through, when we started, uh, why the channel started, all kinds of stuff. Because there's actually a lot of really good stories that I've been through already. And uh, I figure some of them will be interesting to you guys, so let's go ahead and start off. Okay, so the channel at the time of this video right now, it's been out for a little over two years. It started in October of 2013. Well, before this channel started, I was live streaming on Twitch. And uh, I was doing a little bit of Warrior PvP. Uh, you know, I had, I had played Rift whenever it was in beta. And I basically started out and I go, man... This, this feels like another World of Warcraft game, you know, it, because I didn't know much about it. it. At the time, I was really tied up in Dark Age of Camelot and stuff like that, you know, games that, uh, you know, I was really seated into as in I didn't want to go to anything else. But I was, you know, trying out other games here and there uh, just to see if anything kind of caught my attention. Well, uh, whenever I got on Rift, I was like, man, it feels like World of Warcraft, and I don't like World of Warcraft. There's a reason why I'm not playing it, and um, so we're not going to play Rift. And so I moved on to other stuff. I started playing other games. I dabbled in EVE Online. I went to uh, Star Wars The Old Republic. I mean, just lots of other games. And, um, well, eventually I got to watching... Uh, I think it was Bajira had made a Rift video and he said, look at me running around and I'm leveling up in Rift. And uh, I was like, man, that's actually pretty cool. I, I'm wanting to give that a try. Kind of at the time I was in between MMOs and I really wasn't set on anything. I think I was playing a little bit of War World of Warcraft at the time. As a matter of fact, I was leveling up characters and I was thinking, you know, I'd like to get going in this big MMO and see how it takes me kind of thing. I always hated jumping on the bandwagons for big MMOs. I was the type of person that was always trying to play the smaller ones because I felt like the smaller ones had a lot to offer. And the big ones like World of Warcraft and stuff were just bandwagon games. It was People were just playing because they knew somebody that had played on there and stuff like that. And me, I was like, man, you know, games like Dark Age of Camelot, uh, you know, in Rift, uh, as another example, they're smaller games, but they have a lot to offer. They're, they're extremely good games. So I went ahead and jumped on Rift and I started leveling up my character. Well, I was playing it hardcore. I, I'm, I'm a big time MMO player. I play it very hardcore anytime that I do play games. And, uh, yeah, I started grinding. Uh, I was trying out uh, different builds and stuff like that. And I remember I got into, I, I hit max level, and I did most of it through PvP. And I was running around PvP. And, but I didn't have a good build. I didn't even know where to find a good build or anything like that. Uh, I was playing some kind of mixture of uh, a different, I, I forget the even builds I was using. I think I was using some Reaver and stuff like that because back then, uh, Reaver was like a tankish soul. And I had in my mind, I wanted to be like a Death Knight in World of Warcraft or something like that, you know, or a Shadow Knight back in EverQuest or something like that. And I go, all right, so I want to make this Reaver build. I'm going to I'm going to use like all these dots on the people and it's going to be like a vampiric thing. I'm going to heal myself. I'm going to be unstoppable and all this. Yeah, I got beat up all the time. And um, well, what was a big game changer for me is I got into a conquest match. And I was running around in Conquest and I jumped down and all of a sudden there's this guy down there and he starts fighting me. Well, 
you know, it's one-on-one. -on -one. I'm thinking, I got a good chance. I, I got this build that I put together, and I think it's pretty good. And all of a sudden, this guy just tears me up. You know, of course, he's running one of the big builds at the time. But I had no idea what these big builds were. I'm, I wasn't part of a big guild that was sharing the best uh, soul builds in the game or anything like that. I didn't even know where to find good soul builds. So it was like this guy just tore me up. And I, I looked at the combat log and I seen all these warlord abilities he was using. All right. So that kind of triggers you guys right now, probably. Well, um, I, I looked at it. And I sent him a message. And I go, hey, man, what is this build you're running? You completely demolished me. You know, I, I was automatically playing the inferior, you know, because that always makes people... A lot happier to talk to you whenever you're not acting like you're better than them. You're you're basically acting like you're the same or weaker, which I was weaker, so I was going to act my role. I was going, man, you completely demolished me. What was the build, man? Please tell me. I would love to know. And he goes, it's a uh, 61 Warlord. And, um, of course, Paragon as a secondary soul, and I, I think it was Tempest as his third soul at the time. Well, I was thinking, man, that was awesome. All right. So I put together the the Warlord build that I, I started using then. And all of a sudden, my gameplay just changed so much, man. I, I ran out and I was just demolishing people. And I was going, this is pretty good, man. I, I don't even have very good gear, but I, I'm stomping on people. Man, this build made so much of a difference. Uh, how can you find these builds? Where are people posting them at? Well... I wasn't too sure at that either, but uh, all of a sudden it became the big craze of uh, Tempest. Tempest automatically got, uh, suddenly got buffed, and uh, it was right around October of 2013, I believe it was, like right at the time of my channel being uh, uh, created, and there's a reason for this because um I, w I was out fighting with my warlord build and just smashing people and all this stuff well tempest got beefed up and all of a sudden i seen somebody in a war front and he just smashed me much like that warlord guy had smashed me in the past and i was like man what the heck did i just get blown up with you know i have no idea and uh well, I went out and I fought some more and automatically I got blown up again. I mean, it was insta-killed. It was no retaliation, much like a pyromancer or a paragon will blow you up now or a shaman or something. Well, that wasn't usually what happened back then. If you watch my old PvP videos, whenever I'm killing 30-something people, I'm having to hack away at them. There's no instant-killing going on. Like there is uh, nowadays. I mean, the time to kill is just short, so short right now. Back then, it wasn't that way. I, I had to actually fight people and hack away at them and eventually kill them. And it gave them time to retaliate. And it made PvP much more skillful because, you know, people could do things. They could stun you whenever this was happening. Run around pillars, all this stuff. It wasn't just a nuking kind of game. So whenever I was getting blown up by this Tempest spells, I was going, okay, who is this and how are they doing it? All right. So uh, I seen who it was and I ran up and I got blown up several other times, but I was doing it on purpose after that because I was looking at the combat logs and I remember I sent the guy a tell and it was Nephi. Uh, some of you guys are familiar with Nephi. Uh, he was... A big time pvp -er. uh but the thing is is he combined the pvp with the rating much like a lot of people do these days and uh so he had like you know the best trinket in pve the the raids were uh allowing you to have and he was bringing it into pvp and it was such a big impact in pvp well he also knew warrior really well and so he was running this Tempest build and he was blowing people up. Well, at the time, and I did not know this, that if you stacked uh, Tempest with Paragon, you could combine Shifting Blades with Arc and they would stack and you would instant nuke people. I mean, it was just combining this big explosive damage all at once and it just, boom, you were dead. There was, there was no retaliation. There was nothing you could do. And... Um, well, I sent him a tell and I said, hey, man, 
you're completely nuking me uh dude you are just you know awesome in this war front and i think he got like 40 or 50 kills in that war front because tempest was just insane at that time and i said what's the build you're running he said not going to tell you and i go what what why you know and he goes no you're going to have to figure it out yourself and so i started running up to him afterwards and dying more and more i was like feeding into this 50 or whatever kills that he was getting because I wanted to look at the combat logs and see exactly what he was using on me. He wasn't going to tell me, so I was going to figure it out. And, um, well, he, he basically said, I will give you one tip, you know, just don't, uh, he was saying to separate all of your buttons out and that's a big time PVE mentality. Uh, and he did a lot of PVE. So naturally it flowed into his PVP like it does a lot of other people. Um, and I go, okay. So, uh, and so I was getting blown up all these times. Well, I went and I looked at all of the abilities and I was screenshotting everything that I was seeing. And I basically figured out what kind of build he was running for the most part. And I was live streaming it. Now, mind you, I was only live streaming. And so I was trying to figure out this Tempest build. And at the time, my live streams were lagging a lot. You know, Rift is very uh, resource intensive. And it was it was one of those things that it, I started weighing out my options. I started going, okay, there's not a lot of people watching Rift live streams. You know, I was getting like 20, 30 people watching me. You know, it was before I was on YouTube. I wasn't even very popular and I was already the top live stream. So I was pretty happy about that. That was really cool to me. But, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't doing much. You know, I, there wasn't much being accomplished by live streaming Rift. So it felt like a dead end. And then all of a sudden I was lagging a lot because Rift is just really intensive whenever it comes to resources on your computer and stuff. And I started thinking, man, everybody's complaining about my laggy stream. You know, the quality of it's going down, stuff like that. You know, mind, mind you, this was over two years ago, so I didn't have nearly as good of a computer as I do now. And, well, uh... I decided to go ahead and try out uh, YouTube videos and I go, okay, well, I pretty much figured out this Tempest build. You know, people were coming into my live stream too and kind of helping out with the Tempest build as well. And uh, we pretty much figured out how it worked, what abilities, where the points went, all that stuff. It might not have been exactly like Neffy was running it, but it was pretty dang close because I knew he was blowing me up. And uh, so... I went out with this Tempest build on live stream and I went out there and started nuking people myself. Now, mind you, I wasn't like doing like, you know, 40, 50 kills because I didn't have even the best PVP gear, much less the raid trinkets and all this stuff. I didn't have all that. So it was, it was kind of one of those things that I just had to go out and make do with what I had with a very overpowered build. So I went out there and I was nuking people down and I was doing really well. I was killing people a lot more than I probably should have. Uh, much like a pyromancer can now. You know, you can run in with a very undergeared pyromancer and still blow everybody up. It's insane. Well, that's how Tempest was back then. And so I got a lot of that footage and I put it together and I uploaded it on YouTube. And... I didn't realize how good of a video I had. It, it was kind of like, uh, I, I, it's hard to say. It, it's almost like I, I put it together and I thought, eh, I think I did an all right job. You know, let's go ahead and upload it. And I definitely want to upload it while this whole Tempest craze is going on. You know, I want to show this video before it gets nerfed or something like that. And, uh, well, I posted it and then I posted it on the PVP forums, on the uh, Trine uh, forums. And automatically people were going, what the heck, man? You know, this guy is blowing everybody up. This is stupid. Nerf this soul, blah, blah, blah. Nobody was really talking about my gameplay. You know, like they always, they always hack at you now. You know, if you post, if you're a new guy on the scene and you post your very first PVP video, everybody's insulting your UI. They're insulting your rotation. They're insulting, you know, how you didn't use your CC or, you know, it was all, all this stuff. And they were, uh, you know, there's just such a hateful player base on the forums. 
and they didn't insult me at all on this video. It was more like outrage that this was even happening. And I seen people like sharing my video all over the place. And, you know, I wasn't nobody. I was just live streaming stuff. And I, I wasn't even live streaming very long at that point. And uh, all, all, automatically my video got pretty much a thousand views overnight. And, you know, my videos do pretty good now. I mean, I get a thousand views overnight on a lot of my videos. But then it was, I was brand new on the scene. It was my very first video. So this was crazy to get a thousand views overnight. And uh, people were just sharing it around. They were going, nerf this. This is stupid, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, yeah, all, all of a sudden I, I got a lot of attention on my YouTube channel. Well, I started thinking, well, I need to share this Warlord build that I have too because it's really good and the the Tempest is probably going to get nerfed. I, I can pretty much guarantee it. Even in my uh, videos, I was saying, yeah, it's going to get nerfed. And so I posted the Warlord build and I believe I called it the one Warlord build to rule them all, you know, like a Lord of, a Lord of the Rings reference. And... It started getting shared around. All of, uh, all of a sudden, it had 3,000 views and all this stuff. And I was going, man, this is crazy. I mean, I'm not even entertaining. Uh, I know you guys will speculate now. A lot of you find that I'm entertaining. A lot of you don't. But back then, it was a whole different story. Uh, I was completely monotone with all of my speaking. I wasn't speaking very much. Uh, just, I was very, very amateur at it. And... It was much worse than it is now. So uh, I couldn't believe that people were enjoying what they were watching. So I was like, okay, well, let's start doing giveaways. Let's do all this stuff, you know. So uh, I would basically buy wrecks in the game and stuff like that. And I would try to, uh, like, uh, do giveaways of just pets and stuff, you know. Uh, now I know that nobody wants pets, really. But at the time, I was like... I'll give away a pet and I'll give away a mount here and there. That would be cool. Everybody wants a mount. And uh, so I was doing that and people were really interested in it. They were uh, taking part in the giveaways. They were uh, loving the builds and stuff like that. And mind you, I wasn't getting any criticism over any builds that I was making at the time. Well, um, I, I took my, I took, a couple of videos and I post them on the, uh, the PVP forums and stuff afterwards. And I was thinking, well, that first video really took off. Let's go ahead and post these other ones on there too. Well, then the hateful people start coming out, you know, we, you know, you're a terrible player, you, you know, all this stuff. And I was very, uh, inexperienced at that time with Rift. So it, it wasn't even like, uh, I could defend myself very much. It, it wasn't like, no, I, I know what I'm doing, you know, like I am now. I No, I know how to PvP. I know it, guys. So if anybody tells me I'm bad or something like that, I'm blowing you off because I, I know better. I, I know I'm doing decent. And uh, for, and that, that's why I always facepalm so big time anytime a raider goes, you know, you, you're terrible at this game. What? That's like me telling you you're terrible at the game whenever you raid. I can't say that because it would be ignorant. And that's what they do to me. They go, you're a terrible player. You know, although I go 0 and 10 in PvP, I, I down to world first boss and, you know, you're a terrible player. You know, it's, what? So uh, all these insults were coming, you know, it wasn't like the macros or anything like that. It was, it was just the gameplay. They, they were just being insulting just for the sake of being insulting. And that now I know that's how the forums are. If you put, you can post on there, Hey, I want to give you guys a million bucks and everybody will be like, yeah, you're just trying to buy your friends. You know, <laughs> what? you know, that's just how the forums are these days. And they really just like put me to the fire, just insults and insults and all this stuff. And I was like, man, I'm never going to post on the forums again. This is like a toxic player base here. So I, I automatically just started doing my uh, YouTube videos. And I decided to quit Twitch altogether because the game was lagging on Twitch. My computer wasn't really handling it too well. And YouTube was obviously taking off for me. This is awesome. You know, so uh, I started kind of looking around at other builds and stuff like that. I was wanting to post more builds. And uh, there was another person that was making a lot of really good warrior builds called D-Day. 
if you guys are, uh, I don't think he's even around on the scene anymore these days. I know he's definitely not posting builds and all that, but he was posting some really good warrior builds. He's the one that posted the 48 uh, Warlord uh, 28 Paragon and also the 48 Warlord 28 Paladin builds, you know, that I made videos of and they were very, very popular videos. And I was just like, man, this guy really has a grasp on all this. And uh, the guy was just really new as stuff. Now, as far as if he was good as in PvP and gameplay, I'm not sure. But I knew that the guy knew what he was talking about whenever it came to putting together PvP builds. Because they were completely different than the PvE ones, you know. Uh, you put a lot more things in macros because you got to uh, focus on your movement, line of sight, stuff like that. You know, these were awesome Warlord builds. Uh, I cannot emphasize how great they were. And they made a lot of players that were not very good players into really good players because it was much like the transformation that uh i had back whenever i first got in that fight with the 61 warlord guy and whenever he told me the build all of a sudden my gameplay just skyrocketed man and that's what i was hoping to do for other people and uh right off the bat with all of d-day's builds i i got a firm grasp of how pvp works versus the pve stuff because i pve quite a bit uh back then too uh i was trying to do stuff anyway i was uh you know try, trying my hand at everything not that i was very good at it but uh i did a lot of like in-game raiding and wow and dark age of camelot and you know i was big time in swotor in-game raiding and uh, just all this stuff. I, Age of Conan, uh, we were down in the latest bosses before anybody and all this stuff. So I, I knew how PvE worked. But, you know, seeing D-Day's builds really got me to grasp what the PvP side of it was. And that's what I always show in my build videos, you know, how much different it is than PvE. Uh, a lot of times you'll get PvEers uh, that, uh, you know, they, they do both. Like they raid and they do pvp and they always think that nothing needs to be in macros everything needs to be separated and uh people like d-day really knew better they they knew that you didn't have to do all that and, i mean take for instance uh these people that are very good uh raiders and they pvp how often do you see them line of sight how often do you see them uh you know, just marking targets. I mean, just all this, all these things that are very important in PvP, I don't ever see those people do that. Uh, I mean, they might do it sometimes, but they don't, they don't focus on that stuff. They don't understand that uh, PvP is, uh, needs to be quite a bit different than the PvE. Now, to say that they're not good PvPers would be a complete, you know, wrong thing to say because these guys are usually the top geared people and they know how to play their characters they they you know separate everything out and all that but the focus isn't the same you know it, it's it's almost hard to explain because you know the focus in pvp and i keep saying that a lot lately is that it needs to be in line of sighting stuff like that but lately that hasn't been as much the case because of all the you know nuke builds that are out right now with pyromancers and marksmen and everybody else getting blown up so yeah that's kind of how it changes but you know th this was so educational for me looking at this uh other person's builds well that got me brainstorming and wanting to do builds myself so i started coming together with a lot of my own builds and uh was really experimenting a lot i was trying to brainstorm okay does this ability work well with this one can you stack them you know uh take for instance you know uh you might look at something that over here, if you pop this ability, it'll make your next three abilities uh, hit like with an additional hit afterwards or something like that, like an arc or something like that. Well, then you look at this other tree and you see that this ability here will make your next ability hit like super hard. Well, okay, can I stack like at least the last charge of this three onto this 
one ability over here where I'm just going to have this huge nuke of a hit. And that's the type of and that's the type of stuff that I was experimenting because PvP is more about burst abilities. Uh, and back then, you know, whenever I was making all these initial builds, it was trying to figure out how to get burst abilities and because it wasn't as much about burst back then as it is now. Uh, as in, there wasn't as many burst builds and stuff like that. So it was always trying to figure out which abilities could cause that burst. What, uh, I, I see even like people like Techfall and all them, you know, they get criticized in the forums and stuff. But the guy makes sense with a lot of, a lot of the stuff that he talks about. You know, you see that he says about uh, burst abilities being what matters in PvP. Yes, that is correct. Uh, he talks about line of sighting and all this stuff. Yeah, you're right. You know, that's how it works. And the people that are arguing with him are the people that do a lot of raiding. You know, it's, I guess it's difference of points of view, but uh, yeah, it, it, it needs to be, uh, I, I believe that PvPers need to focus on movement, line of sight, marking targets, all that stuff, picking the correct targets, all that and uh some people have the same point of view as i do and some people don't so but i don't i don't tell the people that do not have my point of view that they're bad or that they're stupid or anything else you know i don't insult them uh, but they like to insult me a lot of times but all right so we got these builds together i'm experimenting with my own builds and all that and uh, I started thinking, okay, well, let's start reaching out to people. Let's try to work with some other people. So uh, automatically, I, I start thinking about working with Noobzilla. Noobzilla was fresh on the scene. Uh, well, he wasn't real fresh on the scene. He, his channel had been out longer than mine. Uh, I wasn't looking too much towards Intum because Intum had started his channel at the exact same time. But his was kind of lagging behind and he was having a lot of... Uh, uh, I, I would say audio problems to where his mic wasn't very good and stuff like that. And I was thinking if I, if I did a video with him, I would love to, but man, he, it just, the audio was so bad. You know, you, you, you would think that it would sound bad in a video. So I was like, okay, hopefully this guy gets his audio together and man, I'd love to work with him and stuff like that. I started thinking about space boots and you know, the big guy that was making videos at that time was extreme RT and uh seton was not too far behind and stuff like that so i sent a message to uh noobzilla and said let's run a warfront together he said cool i would love to and um uh i sent a message to extreme rt he basically said i don't know who you are you know it, it was it was it wasn't it wasn't like i don't think he was trying to be mean but it was pretty dang insulting just to say yeah, we're probably not going to work together because I have no clue who you are. You know, that kind of thing. And, um, well, Seton, uh, I had made a leveling video and, uh, it was a power leveling one. And, uh, he made a video that was the exact same thing. Now, he had made an earlier video that was basically the same method. But, uh, that was like two years a go or something like that and I had no idea about that video and I made a leveling video in Storm Legion and uh, he automatically like less than two weeks after I made my leveling video he made one that said exactly the same thing that mine did he went into a lot more detail and stuff like that and I was like oh man this guy's channel is a lot bigger than mine you know he he's just going to completely overshadow mine and the exact same forum that i posted my video on on the riff forums he posted his on so it was you know since everybody knew who he was it just completely overshadowed my video and i i kind of sent him a message and said man you know, uh, could you get, it was kind of worded like, could you give my channel a little more time to let mine air before, uh, you post yours? And he was, he basically went, you know what? It's ludicrous that you even mentioned that because I made the same method two years ago. So, you know, just deal with it. That's kind of how he said it to me. And, uh, man, I was like, I don't want anything to do with this guy. You know, he's a jerk. You know, I don't want nothing. You know, I want to, I want to deal with 
positive people. And man, he was, he was just super like hateful about it. I thought, well, little did I know at the time that Seton was trying to work his way up. He was trying to uh, get bigger than Extreme RT and all that. And he didn't really have the vision of working with people. He was looking to become the top guy. And uh, it, it was really about, I don't want to promote you. I want to be bigger than you. You know, I, I want to be the guy everybody watches. Uh, I don't want people looking at your channel instead of mine or something like that. That's kind of how he looked at it. And he told me that recently. So it was like, you know, at the time though, it was extremely rude. I thought, so I was like, I don't want anything to do with this guy. And, um, well, uh, Noobzilla was the guy that really was promoting me and stuff. He was going on the forums and going, Grim hit a hundred subscribers, Grim hit a thousand subscribers and all this stuff. And he was telling everybody about me. I thought he was so cool. You know, it was like the guy had nothing to gain from promoting me, but yet he was doing it. And, uh, so, uh, we did like a war front together and we did a, his, uh, his point of view and my point of view kind of thing. And, you know, at the time he was running around with a warlord build where he was just basically, you know, face rolling people. He was, he was playing like, uh, minimal buttons and, uh, I mean, like Macron, even worse than, you know, anybody does these days, probably. And uh, he he just completely was face rolling people and he was killing everybody, you know, because he had very good gear. Uh, he also, uh, he ran away whenever it got real bad, but he usually got to where he was kamikaze. He would just go after it, you know, and, and if he died, he would just leave the war front. You know, if it was... If it was not going to be video worthy, he just soul recalled out and go to the next one. And, uh, well, you know, whenever you keep smashing into these people over and over, eventually you're going to get these huge kill war fronts. And that's what he did. He, he was able to go in and he would get somebody healing them and he would just smash all these people. And all of a sudden he was going, okay, I just did a 60 kill war front. Uh, and I didn't die once or I might have died once or something like that. Here's the video guys. And, uh, you know, I was watching it going, man, he got pocket healed through the whole thing, but he got 60 kills, man. I want 60 kills. And, but I was real big on not getting pocket healed. I wanted to show my skill in videos. So I was always like, do not pocket heal me. You know, uh, I want to show that I know when to run away. I know when to line a sight. I know when to do all this, all these things. But the thing is, is if I go out and I'm fighting somebody and I need to run away, that's time taken away from me getting these high kills. And I was never really going to get the super high kills like somebody like Noobzilla was doing because he was going all out and not running away almost ever. And so it was, it, there was no way I was going to reproduce his type of uh, results, so to say. So I was trying to focus more on skilled gameplay, much like uh, Space Boots would do these days. You watch a Space Boots video and he's macroing things just like PVPers and all that do. And, uh, but he'll go out there and you can tell he has superior movement. He knows how to kite. He knows how to line of sight. He marks targets. I mean, all these things that I tried to do as well, this guy has a grasp on it. He, he's doing all that thing, all those things. But you'll also notice that he puts a lot of things in macros and all that because that's how pure PvPers do it. And so uh, uh, I got to where I would uh, try to promote Space Boots and uh, Noobzilla and all these other people quite often. I would do big giveaways on the Rift forums and say, if you like my content, watch these other guys. You know, the walkie is on the scene now. Uh, we got Noobzilla, Space Boots, this new guy is coming on the scene, watch him, you know, just, I was really trying to promote other people, and uh, what blew me away is that some of those people just was looking to bring others down, uh, like Space Boots and all of them, they, they've never talked bad about me as far as I'm aware, but they try to tear me down whenever I'm only trying to help players and stuff. I'm only trying to help everybody learn builds and stuff that I couldn't learn whenever I first started the game. Um, you know, just all that stuff. And it just blew me away that somebody could be that hateful. And so I was like, okay, I've got to pick and choose who I'm wanting to work with and stuff. 
And I was like, you know, I, I don't need to deal with the people that are going to turn on me. They're going to be hateful, toxic people. I need to figure out who these guys are before I even get involved and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I tried to do that. Um, but I, I've, I've messed up along the way where I tried to work with people that really shouldn't have been uh, worked with. Uh, Oriah being one of them just recently. Uh, people like that, you know, I mean, he was recently on my channel, you know, spamming insults to me and telling everybody never to watch my videos and stuff. This was a guy that I, of course, uh, offered to work with, uh, offered to even pay him to put guides on my video, uh, on my channel and stuff like that. And he completely turned on me much like, you know, the do and people like that. And, um, so I, I got to like where I was like, man, I got to pick and choose who I work with. Well, uh, about this time is whenever, uh, Seton was coming back on the scene a little bit. And, uh, he, me and him started get, uh, we got an offer from Tryon to make videos for him. And, uh, uh, Tryon was basically like, you know, we think that you guys are doing a lot of good stuff. You've been consistent so long. You know, I mean, this is what they were telling me. They might not have been telling him that because he went inactive for a bit, but I'm sure he's just been a big staple with them anyway, that it was like, you know, I'm sure they had their positive things to say about him as well. And they basically told me that they, they felt like I was a really positive person for the community. I don't let any of the trash talk and all that get to me. And I don't, uh, I don't like get involved with all that you know just they they wasn't really saying too much of that it was more like you know we really think that you're making great content and we would love you to uh make some videos for us you know some promotional videos and i had seen on a forum post that they said that they had redirected some of their uh resources towards advertising and stuff like that where it uh, you know, they took away stuff like the uh, mobile app and all that, but yet they were redistributing the resources towards uh, advertising and stuff like that. Well, uh, all of a sudden, me and Seton get this offer to make videos for them. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's where some of the resources is going and to is towards expanding out the advertising. And we got brought into the fold a little bit. Well, uh, we started making videos for him and me and Seton kind of reconnected at uh, this time. Uh, mind you, he was like a 17 year old kid whenever he got, uh, you know, mouthy with me on the forums. And now it's like two years later. Uh, he's, he's got a job now, you know, he's making money. He's not really focused on the YouTube thing anymore. And uh, we kind of had a long Skype call where we, we basically just told each other what we thought. Uh, you know, he was telling me that, you know, this is what I hear and, you know, I like this. I don't like this. And I'm, I'm saying, I think you're a jerk because of this, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, I know I was a jerk then. I apologize. You know, let, let's, let's get things straightened out and let's, let's work together. You know, let's, let's come together th to, for things like, uh, the charities and, you know, uh, uh, you know, just a lot of things. We can we can work together and become a very good team. And uh, I'm thinking, yeah, that, that is right. And uh, it would be so good to work together with other people that are not going to be negative, not going to be those toxic people that uh, whenever you try to work with them, all of a sudden they flip and they do like really negative things to harm the game. And so it was like, okay, I need to branch out and do this more. I had already made that video where I talked about collaborating with people. And that was one of the reasons why Seton got a hold of me. And, you know, was basically, uh, we just hashed out everything is because I'm really interested in working with people that are going to be positive, not the people that are like spreading hate videos and, you know, talking trash about Tron and stuff like that. This is the game we love. We need to promote it. We need to actually have a love for it and not try to bash it down every chance we get. And yeah, uh, so I've been kind of on a mission ever since then to uh, work with the people that have promoted it. You know, I, I often say the, I, I wish I could have worked with the Rift podcast more. I was on their podcast a few times. Um, I, I 
you know, I'm wanting to work with the Dimension uh, Touring Company, uh, with Discordia on the wardrobe contest. Uh, we got so many things that I'm wanting to do to promote and build this game up to something that uh, I'm proud of. I mean, I'm already proud of it. I just want to, you know, contribute even more. And so I started thinking... I want to do this full time. Let's run PVP tournaments. Let's do this wardrobe contest. Let's uh, every month. Let's give away big prizes every month. Let's do uh, a parkour dimension. You know, let's do all these things. But in order to do all that, we have to have like I have to have the free time to do it. And right now, uh, you know, I'm making some trying videos. Uh, I get a little bit of money from YouTube, not much at all. Um, just, it's just not, not enough. So I'm having to go and, you know, work elsewhere. And, uh, people were always telling me, you know, Hey, your, uh, your donations have slowed down some, why don't you start a Patreon account? You know, uh, even if people are just donating a dollar, it'll add up because a lot of people will support you if, uh, you create this Patreon account and, um, for the upper levels, if somebody donates like, you know, uh, $50 or something, you could do a build video exactly of the souls that they want to see. You know, if you're wanting to see a Rift Blade, uh, build, well, you know, if somebody makes that donation, you know, you're committed to making that build. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's a really good deal. You know, really good idea. And it would give me the resources to actually do all these great things for the community. And so I started the Patreon account and I haven't really promoted it much at all. Uh, I, I mentioned it in one video, I think. And uh, so far we've gotten uh, somebody signed up. Somebody already signed up for the $2 donation. So that's really, really cool. Uh, even with me not even mentioning it har hardly at all. So hopefully it'll catch on. That will give me the resources to really contribute towards the community even more. And maybe we'll get the wardrobe contest going with Discordia. Maybe we'll get uh, Dimension contest going. Maybe we'll get the PvP tournaments back if I can work with Aloe Gel and Kalia again. Um, you know, they're, they've been interested in doing this. You know, I'm sure it's just, uh, you know, if they got a little more motivation as in Grim going, guys, let's do this, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, there's just, uh, you know, somebody has brought a, uh, a dimension to my attention that has parkour and I'd love to do parkour contests and stuff like that. You know, so many good things that we can do with this channel and help the community, but I just need the, the time and the resources. And also I need the backing of you guys. You know, it, it, it needs to be where you guys support what I do. And if, if you guys support what I do, there's going to be a lot of good things coming in 2016. Uh, a lot of a lot of new live streams are going to pop up because if we if we promote the community, there's going to be more YouTube channels. There's going to be more uh, live streams and all that. And uh, since I'm getting a little bit closer to the the Tron team, you know, I'm not I'm not real close to them. I'm not like skyping them or anything like that. Like uh, uh, Seton tells me he does, but you know, as I get closer to them, I'm going to try to get them involved in helping you guys with your stuff as well. Because I know a lot of you guys don't know to ask them for something. You know, if you run a PvP tournament or something like that, you don't know to ask them. Well, what if Grim comes in and goes, hey, I see you're running this PvP tournament. I'm going to contact a couple of these developers and I know which ones to talk to. We're going to get them involved and, you know, see if they'll be willing to help you out as well. Because I feel like you need to be helped out. You're doing something great. Let's bring it to their attention. And, you know, Tryon's always loving whenever players do something to promote the community. So, yeah, that's kind of the history of the channel so far. Uh, a little bit, uh, a lot of cool things have happened. Uh, there's individual stories that I can go into a lot more details of. Uh, there's... Uh, there's some drama along the way. Um, uh, I try to avoid the drama like crazy. You know, I usually give everybody the benefit of the doubt. I try to respond to them. Uh, you know, if somebody goes, you know, this is what I don't like about you, Grim. I go, well, this is why I do this. Or, you know, I, you know, I try to respond back to them and give them some kind of feedback. 
but then whenever somebody turns toxic or else they've been to uh, they were toxic from the beginning and it just got worse like they go i don't like this about you grim and i go well i'm sorry you feel that way but you know I, I don't like that you put it the way that you did but this is why this is going on or whatever and they're like well you're fake blah 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 all this stuff and it's like okay man you know let's get you off this channel we don't we don't want people that are just going to be hateful and negative we want people that are going to, uh, if you're going to criticize anything I do, do it constructively. You know, say, don't call my guide horrible or I'm a newbie or something like that. You know, say something like, hey, this macro here doesn't really work. I think it needs to be this way and maybe you shouldn't put this in the macro or something like that. You know, something constructive instead of just being a hateful person because it's only going to get you banned on my channel. I don't put up with that stuff. And uh, I don't think any of you guys want to see somebody talking like that either because that's not the mood of this channel. This this channel is completely about positivity, helping others, and being an asset to the community rather than uh, a toxic cancer to it. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, apologize that I didn't have like a build video or something for you guys to see. Hopefully you will enjoy the story time, uh, the ups and downs of it. And uh, if you guys enjoy it, make sure to hit the thumbs up button because we'll do lots more story times and maybe we'll go into more details on a lot of the things that come up. So, yeah, uh, there's a lot of good stories. A lot of them on the, top of my uh, on the tip of my tongue right now that I'd love to just go into talking about. Uh, some of them are, are cool stories. Some of them are a bit of drama and stuff like that. I don't really like getting involved in the drama. But whenever you get a little bit bigger, as people notice you more, it, there's a lot of drama that just comes. It just happens. I mean, and even with somebody like me that tries to avoid it, it's forced onto me sometimes. And yeah, a lot of cool stories, a lot of wild stories. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. As usual, my name is Grim. And I'll see you next time.